Good morning, guys. I hope you're doing well. So it's the next day and I'm going to go over doing a pressure and vacuum test on the chainsaw. Not to be confused with a compression test and also not to be confused with a leak down test. Each one of those is very different. So uh, pressure and vacuum, I use a Mighty Vac. I think this is the 8500 kit. I'm not certain. You can get Mighty Vac, which are a good tool because you can... Uh, Strip them down, you can replace all the parts as and when they wear out, but uh, you don't need a Mighty Vac. You can get one for 30 US dollars, 50 Australian dollars. Uh, as long as it does pressure and vacuum, you're fine. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do is basically block off the intake, block off, sorry, <laughs> exhaust, block off the intake, and uh, we're gonna then block off the spark plug hole. Now we need to make sure one of those we can <laughs> either extract or uh, add air. So. I keep it simple. I've actually got a kit here. I've got a kit. It's actually a bag of things that I've put together. I've got some inner tube. That's all that this is. And I've, out of this bag, I've just pulled out my two little um, pieces that I use. for. My, well, this one I use for pretty much every exhaust. You pop the exhaust on, you slip that down between the two bolts, cinch it up, and the exhaust is sealed. The other thing, uh, the intake side, there is a bit of variability. Still does actually have an OEM tool, many OEM tools. Uh, however, that one doesn't fit. I don't have any other ones, so I just make my own. A little bit of inner tube. That's the same profile as the intake. And uh, that will go on there. And then I have part of the manifold for the carb, which is just going to put pressure against it. The last thing. Now, once that's done, that just leaves the spark plug hole and sometimes an impulse line. However, the impulse is that tiny hole down there, this little hole. And of course, we're going to be blocking that off. So I'm not then going to have access via the impulse, which is normally a very good way of doing it. So I have made an adapter, made this ages ago, actually. It's from a spark plug and I just put a bit of an O-ring on there, put a bit of tube on there, removed the internals and uh, then popped a barb on there as well. And that can go into the spark plug hole and then you can access it from that way. So let's get it put together. We'll go through the process. Oh, a bit of water. I just have a little spray bottle of soapy water uh, just to find the leaks, just like you would a tire in a, or an inner tube for a, for a tire. So let's get on with doing that now. Okay, so back and front are blocked off. Spark plug, make sure that the cylinder, sorry, the piston is at the oh, at bottom dead center. So that's there. And all that does is it opens up the transfer port so that air can then go through down to the crankcase. And then what we're gonna do is screw this one on. Now this has got a little O-ring that I put on there. So don't worry about cranking that down with a tool. Finger tie is fine for that. Like so. And then we're ready to do the test. So the first thing we'll do is a pressure test. Pressure is designed to find air leaks pretty much anywhere except the seals. Now it can sometimes show issues with the seals, but that's not the reason why we do it. So pressure test will show us gaskets, O-rings, um, any leaks in the case halves themselves, any drillings or holes that have slight cracks that will then show leaks. Um, maybe you've got slight imperfections in how the gaskets have been placed down. All those things, um, it's going to show us those as well as not this specific test, but that tool can be used to check carburetors to make sure the needles are seating correctly, the nozzle check valves inside the carbs to make sure that they're holding, lines, so fuel lines, impulse lines, and oil lines. It can tell you whether filters are blocked or not. It can tell you whether the uh, valves are working for the fuel tank and the oil tank. The list is absolutely endless, even down to the point where uh, you have uh, different types of oilers and stuff that are still all part of sealing the crankcase from uh, atmospheric pressure. It can give you the indication as to whether they're working as well. It's just, it, it really is, in my opinion, the the 
the most important tool that a two-stroke engine rebuilder can use and a useful tool for a four-stroke. So there we go. We will add the air first. We'll do pressure. So I literally just slip that in. Now, as for what reading, I go between seven to 10 PSI. So let's uh, flip you around. Okay. And the first thing to note is it will take a few pumps to get the pressure up because you're filling up a lot of space. And also the other thing is once you've done a few pumps, don't be concerned if it then drops a little bit and then holds. That dropping is generally just uh, the the pressure just settling, the O-rings just settling, the seals just, everything just settling in place. So don't worry too much about that. So what we at, we're at nine, eight there, and it's holding perfectly. Doesn't always happen, but, uh, and oftentimes, oftentimes it can be little things that, uh, you would never even think of like having slight cracks in the case somewhere where the threaded screws have gone. That's caught me out before. Little things like that, but typically they're normally on the intake or the exhaust ceiling that you haven't done correctly, uh, or it possibly leaking out the decomp or uh, the spark plug. Oh, they're the most common things. Then you've got gaskets, and then from there on you've got O-rings. And lastly, cases can have slight imperfections. But anyway, that's perfect. And now we're gonna go on to vacuum. So all we'll do here is we'll just release the pressure. We'll twist this, that'll take us to vacuum. Now, PSI, we are going up to seven to 10. The vacuum is INHG. So what we're gonna then do is, it turns out that you need about, if you're doing seven PSI, it's around about 14 uh, INHG. I'm guessing that's inches per something or other. I don't know. You guys, the Imperial guys will know. But anyway, we're gonna do the same thing. And we'll see if uh, this this test is only really for seals. Here to about fourteen. Let's have a watch. I'm going to look through the camera with you. And no. So that's not the only stage, though. So that is telling us that as a stationary engine it's not leaking. But now what we're gonna do is gently rotate the crankshaft. Now I'm not gonna be able to hold you and do this, but uh, we're gonna gently rotate the crank. Let's go to 15, so we're at a, a nice round number. I think we're slightly over 15. Uh, we're about 15-ish, just slightly under. Okay, let me turn the camera off, spin you around. So looking at it now, when I'm not looking through the camera, we are oh, just slightly under 15, between 14 and a half to 15. So that's for the cylinder at bottom dead center. Now what I'll do, we'll just remember that this is where this cable tie is. Not that you really need it, but uh, I'm gonna rotate the crank through a cycle a few times, the, pr the vacuum will change, and then we will uh, see if it settles down. Let's put a bit of a mark. Uh, let's get a pen. We're about there, aren't we? That'll be fine. So let's go and do a few spins. Now you're gonna to struggle to do this by hand with pressure and much easier with the flywheel on. But when you've got the flywheel on, you can't check to see if the seals are leaking if you do have a vacuum leak or which seal is leaking. So uh, we'll do it three times and we'll just confirm that it's not uh, leaking out of the seals. I have had it where they hold when you're not spinning it, but then you spin it and they actually start to leak. These are new, so I'm fairly confident in them, but uh, you just never know. That's the third rotation. Much harder without having anything attached. Back to there. So we're about there, weren't we? We should be about 15 and a half. Sorry, 14 and a half to 15, and we are. Let's show you that. So we're still at that same point, just slightly under, it depends how you, the perspective you hold it, but. Uh, Slightly under 15, but above 14 and a half. So that is, let's spin you back now. Sorry, this is gonna make you dizzy. So that is the pressure and vacuum test complete. It's actually a very simple test when everything goes right. My goodness, I have been searching and searching and searching to find leaks before. My, my 034 Super had a leak and I could hear it just about occasionally. And then sometimes it would stop, sometimes it would start, sometimes I checked everywhere. 
finally, I literally just took this bottle and went over the whole thing. Now you can submerge it. I don't like the idea of submerging it in uh, water, but uh, you can do. It's not really a good idea. Um, you don't really want this magnesium to be sucking up a whole heap of water. Magnesium is super porous. So you put it in water and you will see bubbles and bubbles and bubbles. Anyway, my point being, it was the oiler hole must have had tiny cracks in it. The threaded area had tiny cracks and it would I would put water in there and it would just do a bubble occasionally coming up and then it would stop and then it, would, it was a nightmare. But anyway, a little bit of Loctite cleared that up straight away. But uh, that's the test. It's a great tool. It's so important. Even though we've rebuilt this engine, it doesn't necessarily mean just because we put new gaskets, new seals and everything that everything's going to work fine. I've put new seals on, OEM seals on saws before and they've leaked. Um, I've put gaskets and everything in place and they've leaked. In fact, that's why I now always use Permatex number three. That's that brown liquid that you saw me spreading on. It's Permatex number three. I had a leak between where the cases joined and I'd cut the little excess gasket off. So where the mating face for the cylinder and the gasket go. And I had a leak there. Everything was torqued down. Everything was great. Um, so I ended up from now on, I'll always use Permatex number three regardless. I think it's a great product and uh, I've not had a leak like that since. So there we go, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Go out and grab yourself a, a, a pressure and vacuum test if you're working on these engines. They're 50 bucks and I'm on a few different forums and Facebook pages. And so many times I hear people say, oh, my engine's not running or it's not going right. Um, you know, I've done a rebuild or whether you have or haven't done a rebuild. Oh, it's not right. And they start replacing loads of parts and they're spending hundred two hundred dollars on um new carb kits new this new filters new fuel lines new everything and you ask them have you done a pressure and vacuum test no well you you're just wasting your time you're literally throwing your money away that money you could have put onto a good quality tool like this and uh, you would have found your issue straight away so don't be one of those people that just start throwing parts aimlessly at it because you don't want to invest a little bit of money 50 bucks into a tool like that. It's just it's just a bit silly. But there we go. That's just my opinion. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it uh, maybe gave you a bit of direction as to how these things work. I'll quickly run down uh, the few different types of tests and how they're different. Because this is another thing that people get confused about. They can they confuse a pressure test, a vacuum test, a leak down test, and a compression test, and they intermingle them all, but they're all totally different. Pressure test is generally done on a two stroke to check that there are no leaks around the gaskets and the cranks, crankcase, uh, all those different areas that we'd spoken about earlier. A vacuum test is mostly only for seals to see if the, the sealing lip, because they tend to fail on vacuum. Then you have a compression test, which tells you how uh, worn and what the condition of your cylinder and your piston and your rings are in. Well, mo mostly the piston rings, really, uh, but they all, all those three have an effect. So that's a compression test. And then you have a leak down test, which is used to check to see, um, again, it's about the condition generally of the top end, the valves, to see whether air is leaking out. You essentially pump air in, and depending on how much air is flowing out, uh, you can then do a very simple calculation to see how much air is being lost and then where it's being lost. Um, so and that's a four stroke. That's not a two stroke engine. That's a four stroke test. So maybe you'll put a, I don't know, a, a piece of incense or a piece of burning wood or whatever near all these different, you know, it might be the exhaust port, might be the intake port, might be the um, seals, could be gaskets, could be that you put it uh, next to the breather the crankcase breather so that's a leak down to all four tests are totally different and they mustn't be intermingled but there we go hey i hope you enjoyed it and uh next episode i will probably start with the wiring the ignition the coils we'll go over how to test them how to test the capacitor charging discharging and holding of a charge of a capacitor how that's done um, we will go over how to test for continuity we'll go over putting the short circuit wire in how that works and also setting the points um, and all those other things that are all to do with these older style ignitions but uh, there we go hope you enjoyed it i'll catch you soon guys bye